What's up guys, Left Sick Right Sick here again with another recording of an official Dreams tutorial. This tutorial teaches you about another way to make objects, and that's well, through painting. A very advanced technique mode. that will take some time to master. Uh oh. Looks like Connie's having a bad day. Cuthbert got a bit handy with the lawnmower and mucked up her garden. Sorry Connie. Let's paint her a lovely new one in paint mode. So, just to explain. Everything you see in dreams is made up of little splats called flecks. They can be big, loose and painterly, or small, tight and smooth. In paint mode, we deal with strokes, just like real life painting. Strokes are lines of flecks that you draw in 3D space using your imp. Let's make some now. Go to the assembly menu, and if it's closed, just press square to open it. Then open the modes menu with X. It's this little group of icons. In the Modes menu, select Paint Mode with X. It has an icon with a paint squiggle. When you enter Paint Mode, you'll go straight into the Flex menu, and the Brush Flex tool will be equipped to your imp. See? There's a fleck on the tip of your imp. When you're painting, everything else goes blurry and black and white to help you focus on what you're creating. You can adjust the visual feedback in your preferences, which you can find in the options menu. Try pressing and holding R2 while you move your imp around. And look at that, you're painting. Your imp creates a paint stroke made of a trail of flex. Try changing how hard you press R2 as you paint. With the brush fleck tool, changing the pressure on R2 affects how opaque the flecks are. So if you press R2 lightly, the flecks will be more transparent. Now press square to open the paint menu so we can look at some new colors and finishes. Look at the top row of buttons in the paint menu to find them. As well as the flex menu, which is already open, there's also menus for colors and finishes there and you can use these to change the colour and finish of your flex. Practice with the brush flex tool and make as many strokes as you like. You can always undo any oopses with the left directional button. When you've got a feel for painting, continue to the next step. Did you have fun? Now that you've made a gorgeous painting, hold L1 and press circle to scope out of paint mode. It's just like scoping out of a group and works the same way for all creation modes. A painting is a single object created in paint mode, just like a sculpture is an object created in sculpt mode. In assembly mode, you can move, scale and rotate your painting. To edit the strokes in the painting, you can scope into it just like you can with a group. Try scoping into the painting you just made. Hover over it, hold L1, then press X to scope in. When you scope into a painting, you will automatically be put back into paint mode and equipped with a fleck. Press circle to unequip the fleck, and you can now use the move tool on the individual strokes in the painting. You can scope out of the painting again with L1 and circle. Do you fancy making some flowers for Connie's garden? Connie loves flowers. Let's start by making a leaf and then we can work our way up to the petals. Delete your practice painting using triangle, then enter paint mode in the modes menu. Choose a colour and a finish from the paint menu. Then choose a fleck to paint with. Use the up and down directional buttons to adjust the size of the fleck. Now paint a simple stroke. Remember, the harder you press, the more opaque the flecks will be. If you want to take another shot at it, just undo with the left directional button and try again. When you're happy with your leaf, Go to the next step. 
Next, let's paint a stalk. In the context menu, you'll see a button with a plus sign icon. Select this button to start a new painting. For the stalk, we'll use the Draw Flex tool. Open the paint menu with square if it's closed, then select the tools menu. The Draw Flex tool icon is a pencil. Select it with X. Draw Flex acts more like a pen than a paintbrush, and the harder you press R2, the larger the strokes get. So if you press gently, the stroke will be quite small. When you scale the Draw Fleck tool, the fleck will get much bigger. That's because it's showing you the maximum size of the fleck. When you stop scaling, it reverts back to the smallest size the fleck can be. Try drawing a flower stalk with it. Have a few goes to practice. Try adjusting the pressure on R2 as you paint the stroke, so the stalk tapers at the end. Don't worry about lining it up with the leaf though. We'll do that later. When you're happy with your stalk, continue to the next step. Now the exciting bit, the flower. In the context menu, select the Start New Painting button. By starting a new painting, the flower will be a separate object to the stalk. We're going to paint the petals with the Stamp Flex tool plus a special ingredient. You can find Stamp Flex in the Paint Mode Tools menu. Select it with X, then choose a fleck, colour and finish for your flower's petals. Now for that special ingredient. The Kaleidoscope Guide. You can find Kaleidoscope in the Guides menu, which is in the top row of the Paint menu. Select it with X to turn it on. Leave the settings as they are for now. You can experiment with them later. So, you'll now have a clump of five flex on your imp. Stamp a clump in your scene. That will set the centre of the kaleidoscope. You'll now have a fleck on your imp and four others floating around the centre point. And whatever you do to the fleck on your imp will be mirrored in the other four. You might need to adjust your position to get a good view. You could also try rotating the fleck on your imp. To do that, hold L2 and use the sticks, or stroke the touchpad. You can use the up and down directional buttons to scale the flex. Whatever you do, make a lovely flower you like the look of. And if you mess up, you can just undo it with the left directional button and try again. Add as many petals as you like. Try using different colours and sizes. You could also try using the other painting tools you've learned. If you want to delete parts of the bloom, just unequip the Stamp Flex tool by pressing Circle. And then use Triangle to delete any parts you don't like. You can even delete the flex you stamped in the centre, but the Kaleidoscope Guide will still be centred around where they were. With the Move tool equipped, you can also move or even clone parts of the painting. Flex created with the Kaleidoscope Guide will always behave like a kaleidoscope, even when the guide is turned off. Go ahead and experiment. Then when you're happy, proceed to the next step. Now we've finished painting, unequip the Flex tool with Circle. And if it's still on, turn off Kaleidoscope in the Guides menu too. Scope out of the painting by holding L1 and pressing Circle. Now you can assemble the parts of the flower using the Move tool.
Beautiful. Now let's group the flower so it's a single object. Select all the parts of the flower with X. And now select the Group button in the Context menu. The flower is now a single group that we can move, scale, rotate and clone. Hmm, I spy some charming plant pots. How about we put the flower in one of these? Now let's make another flower by cloning the first one. So hold L1, then grab the flower with R2 to make a clone. We don't want them all to look identical though. Let's make a different bloom. You can scope into the flower by holding L1, then pressing X over it. Now delete the bloom from the top of the plant. Let's do something a bit different with this flower. In the next step, I'll show you how to edit the appearance of your flex. Now we've finished painting, unequip the Fleck tool with Circle. And if it's still on, turn off Kaleidoscope in the Guides menu too. Scope out of the painting by holding L1 and pressing Circle. Now you can assemble the parts of the flower using the Move tool. Beautiful! Now let's group the flower so it's a single object. Select all the parts of the flower with X. And now select the Group button in the Context menu. The flower is now a single group that we can move, scale, rotate and clone. Hmm, I spy some charming plant pots. How about we put the flower in one of these? Now let's make another flower by cloning the first one. So hold L1, then grab the flower with R2 to make a clone. We don't want them all to look identical though. Let's make a different bloom. You can scope into the flower by holding L1, then pressing X over it. Now delete the bloom from the top of the plant. Let's do something a bit different with this flower. In the next step, I'll show you how to edit the appearance of your flex. So, let's make a beautiful new bloom for this flower. Enter paint mode and equip the stamp flex tool. To make this bloom look a little different, we're going to edit the flex appearance. We can do that by selecting the Edit Fleck button in the Context menu. Or use this shortcut. Hold L1 and press Square to open the Fleck Editor. The same shortcut as opening a Tweak menu. The Fleck Editor has sliders for altering the appearance of the Fleck. They look a bit different to the sliders you see in Tweak menus, but they work much the same way. Try dragging them up and down using X and see what they do to the fleck on your imp. How exciting! The fade slider adds extra flecks that fade away near the edges. The scatter slider adds extra flecks with impasto to create a more three-dimensional clump of flecks. The opacity slider makes the fleck more transparent. Once you've adjusted the sliders to how you like them, simply press circle to exit the Fleck Editor and start painting with your Fleck. Now create a new bloom for the flower. Try turning on a kaleidoscope again maybe. And when you're finished, exit the painting by pressing L1 and circle. Move the new bloom onto the stalk 
and then scope out of the group with L1 and circle. When you're done, move on to the next step. Now we have some new flowers, how about a bit of rain to bed them in? We can do that by creating an animated stroke. Make sure you're scoped out of any paintings or groups, and then select Paint Mode from the Modes menu. For the rain, we'll use the Rule Flex tool. It's in the Paint Mode Tools menu. The icon looks like a ruler. The Rule Flex tool lets you draw straight lines made of flex. Choose a fleck, colour and finish that you like for your rain. Something watery. Then close the menu with square. These flecks are going to be raindrops, so make them small with the down directional button. Move your view back from the flowers so you can see plenty of space above them. And then position your imp to a reasonable distance above the flowers and press and hold R2. Stretch the stroke down to the grass at a slight angle, then release R2 to stamp it. This line of flex is going to be the path of the raindrop. Unequip the rule flex tool with circle, then scope out of your painting using L1 and circle. It doesn't look like much at the moment, but in the next step, I'll show you how to make it look more rainy. To animate the painting, we need to tweak it. So hover your imp over the painting you just made. Hold L1, then press square to open its tweak menu. Look for the animation page of the tweak menu. The tab has a clapperboard icon. The slider at the top is the playback speed control. Grab the slider with X and pull it to the right. But you won't see anything change to start with. In order to see animation, you need to play the scene by clicking R3. Use the grab cam or sticks to get up close to the stroke and you'll see the flex are moving along it. You can increase the playback speed to make them move faster. The next step is to switch on pulse. When pulse is on, you won't see the whole stroke, and instead, a pulse of flex will travel down it. Select the pulse button in the animation tab of the tweak menu. Its icon is a bomb. Now click R3 to see the effect in action. Ah, yes! That looks much more like a raindrop. You can shorten the trail of the pulse using the slider below the pulse button. Shorten the trail to achieve a raindrop look. Hmm, the drops are still a little on the slow side. Grab the playback speed slider and turn it right up. That's more like it. One raindrop isn't going to water many flowers though. So there's a handy way to duplicate your painting without having to clone it loads of times. I'll show you in the next step. So now let's duplicate our raindrop and create a proper downpour. In the tweak menu of the raindrop painting, look for the duplicates tab. The duplicates icon is a pair of sheep, just like the clone tool. This tab is used to create duplicates automatically, based on a variety of options. Positional duplicates determine where the duplicates appear. The option we want is around camera. Select it and see what happens. Wow, now it looks like it's really raining. This setting duplicates the painting around the camera automatically. So wherever we go in the scene, it will seem like it's raining. At the bottom of the duplicates tab are three sliders. They affect how far apart the duplicates are spaced, how many of them there are, and whether they're scaled randomly. 
Try adjusting the sliders and see if you can create an effect you like. Then close the tweak menu using the close button in the corner. Or hold L1 and press circle over the tweak menu to close it. Now that we've watered the garden, let's add some finishing touches. Open the assembly menu with square, then select the search button with X. The collection for this tutorial contains lots of lovely things made in paint mode using flex. There's also some more plant pots and a garden shed made in sculpt mode. Use the collection and finish making Connie's garden. Add some plants from the collection or stamp some more pots and paint more plants of your own. Make it lovely. When you're happy with the garden, stamp the shed in there somewhere. And to finish the tutorial, switch over to play mode and walk Connie through the door of the shed.